Hello and welcome to study with Sudhir. My name is T.S. Sudhir and you are watching your digital classroom. We are going to be looking at a chapter called Bholi which is part of the CBSC class 10 supplementary reader which is Footprints Without Feet. Uh, it's a story written by K. Abbas. Now Abbas himself is a man with many talents. He dabbled in film direction, wrote the scripts for many movies and also wrote, wrote many short stories in different languages both Hindi, English as well as Urdu. Now uh, you would be interested in knowing that he was the one who had directed Saath Hindustani. Now why am I mentioning Saath Hindustani? Because Saath Hindustani released in November 1969 was the debut film of Amitabh Bachchan, right? That is the first time the Big B, before he became Big B and the angry young man was first seen on the big screen. He also wrote classics and blockbusters like Avara, Shri 420, Bobby, Mera Naam Joker, all of them movies which uh, were directed, produced by Raj Kapoor. Now, we'll read the story. The story is very interesting and it's a story of a little girl called Poli. Now, her name was Sulekha. Now, Sulekha essentially means good handwriting and in, in a sense uh, it's deeply ironic though the name Bholi is the one which is used throughout the story the fact that her real name was Suleka Suleka means good handwriting and in a sense she writes her own destiny her name was Suleka but since her childhood everyone had been calling her Bholi and Bholi means the simpleton a simple minded person she was the fourth daughter of Nambardar Ramlal when she was 10 months old, she had fallen off the cot on her head and perhaps it had damaged some part of her brain. That was why she remained a backward child, backward as in a special child, a child who did not really have very sharp faculties and came to be known as Boli the simpleton, right? At birth, the child was very fair and pretty but when she was two years old she had an attack of smallpox so right at the beginning of the story you are being told of all the things that had gone wrong with Bholi. only the eyes were saved but the entire body was permanently disfigured by deep black pock marks please mark all these different aspects because you you would be asked questions related to what were the different problem areas as far as Bholi was concerned so you would need to mention each one of them which would carry marks and that would fetch you marks in the examinations. Little Suleika could not speak till she was five and when at last she learned to speak she stammered. As a result she talked very little. Basically stammering is also the result of a lack of self-confidence. So since she suffered from a whole lot of problems that must have unconsciously subconsciously led to a, a sense of lack of self-confidence and that resulted in her stammering. Now Ramlal had seven children and Boli was the youngest. Three sons and four daughters and the youngest of them was Boli. It was a prosperous farmer's household and there was plenty to eat and drink. All the children except Boli were healthy and strong. The sons had been sent to the city to study in schools and later in colleges. Of the daughters, Radha the eldest had already been married. So you are being told about how Radha the eldest was daughter um, was married. Manga, who, Mangla who was the second daughter, her marriage had been sealed that the matchmaking had already been done. And after that, he would think of the third daughter that is Champa, right? Uh, but Ramlal was worried about Boli because of the various factors that we have just mentioned because she had neither good looks nor intelligence. So look at the kind of rough manner in which it is kind of expressed because that is what her parents really thought of her. Now Boli was seven years old when Mangla, the second daughter was married. The same year, now this paragraph is important because this is a turning point as far as Boli's life is concerned and childhood is concerned rather. The same year, a primary school for girls was opened in their school. The Tahsildar Saab, Tahsildar is a government official who looks after a village or a cluster of villages in terms of tax collection, revenue, other kind of administrative work. And as a number dar, Ramlal obviously was someone who was subservient junior to the Tahsildar. Uh, he said to Ramlal, as a revenue official, you are the representative of the government in the village. So you must set an example to the villages. You must send your daughters to school. So you realize that at least as far as the Tahsildar is concerned, he seems to be a progressive kind of a person. And he believes that the girl child must be should be educated. So he wants Ramlal to set an example by sending his own daughter to school. That night, 
Ramlal consulted his wife and you see the wife's reaction and that's very important and in stark contrast to the reaction of the Tahsildar. She says, are you crazy? If girls go to school, who will marry them? This essentially means that none of the elder daughters, Radha, Mangla or Champa had ever gone to school. So in that sense, Boli would be the first daughter of the family who would be going to school. But Ramlal had not the courage to disobey the Tahsildar. At last his wife said, I will tell you what to do. Send Boli to school. As it is, there is little chance of her getting married with her ugly face and lack of sense. So it's very harsh words used by a mother. Right? So you would feel you feel even more sympathetic towards Boli. Let the teachers at school worry about her. So they kind of, so it shows that the wife is conservative, very traditional. And even Ramlal is not very keen to send Boli to school, but he wants to do so only because he dare not disobey his senior person. And he wants to pass on the worry to the, she wants to pass on the worry to the teachers. Right? The next day Ramlal caught Boli by the hand and said, come with me, I will take you to the school. Caught Boli by the child. Please mark this because again it shows a roughness. So if you get a question about the parents relationship with Boli, these are the different instances that you need to kind of point out and that will really impress the examiner because that will show that you know the text so well. How the mother reacts, how the father reacts and how she is taken to school on the first day. Boli was frightened. So when a child is frightened, you would try to generally cajole the child, you know, basically ensure that the child gets comfortable because before he or she is taken to school. But in this case, he's just caught her by the hand and led her on to school. She was frightened. She did not know what a school was like. Though in the illustration that has been put in the textbook, it does not show that he is kind of catching her by the hand and leading her. It shows a more sympathetic kind of a body language. So in that sense, the illustration is not really in sync with the text of the story. She remembered how a few days ago, their old cow Lakshmi had been turned out of the house and sold. This line is very important because cow Lakshmi Cow is an important element of the narrative. It's an important detail because she feels like a cow herself. Because as if just like the cow Lakshmi was sold, she also is going to be led out of the house into some kind of an area, some kind of a domain which she is not really aware of. So in that sense, she is having a sense of fear. She imagines the worst about the school because she did not know anything about it. So the cow also just like here, it will continue to be part of the narrative as she grows up. So please make a note of it. It will come several times in the story. No, 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 no. She shouted in terror and pulled her hand away from her father's grip. What's the matter with you? You fool. Another important uh, word. Shouted Ramlal. I am only taking you to school. Then he told his wife, let her wear some decent clothes today or else what will the teachers and other school girls think of us when they see her? So they are conscious about what others will say. But the fact that she did not have any new clothes to wear even on day one of the school is again an important commentary on the kind of childhood Boli led. New clothes had never been made for Boli. All these factors, as I'm going on saying, important. So you need to remember all these points and use that to illustrate your answer in the examination. New clothes had never been made for Boli. The old dresses of her sisters were passed on to her. No one cared to mend or wash her clothes. But today she was lucky to receive a clean dress, which had been shrunk after many washings and no longer fitted Champa, the girl who was elder to her. She was, she was even bathed and oil was rubbed onto her dry and matted hair. So, you know, the hair was dry. So, the first time oil was applied to it in order to make it a little soft and smooth. Only then she began to believe that she was being taken to a place better than her home. So, that again is a huge reflection on the kind of life that she had led so far. That her home was like hell and she believed that if she is being made ready, to go to a new place, it must be a place which is better than her home, which is why she is being made ready in such a manner. Clothes, which are of course uh, passed on from her elder uh, sister and the manner in which her uh, she was given a bath and also her air, hair was oiled. When they reached the school, the children were already in their classrooms. In their classrooms, Ramlal handed over his daughter to the headmistress, left alone. The poor girl looked up 
about her with fear laden eyes now fear laden eyes the clothes all these are important details so please mark it with a pencil in your textbook so that you can use it in your examination there were several rooms and in each room girls like her squatted on mats that is they kind of sat on the floor on mats which are put on the floor not benches reading from books or writing on slates the headmistress asked boli to sit down in a corner in one of the classrooms boli did not know what exactly school was like so this was an alien kind of an atmosphere as far as boli was concerned and what happened there but she was glad to find so many girls almost of her same a a own age present there she hoped that one of these girls could become her friend so essentially showing a kind of yearning to be accepted as a friend by one of the girls in that class the lady teacher who was in the class was saying something to the girls but boli could not understand anything okay she looked at the pictures on the wall the colors fascinated her so abbas is essentially writing here from the point of view of a little child the horse was brown just like the horse on which the tahsildar had come to visit their village the goat was black just like the goat of their neighbor the parrot was green like the parrot she had seen in the mango in the mango orchard and the cow was just like their lakshmi who had been sold off but suddenly boli noticed that the teacher was standing by her side smiling at her okay the teacher another important character in this story though she is silent largely but she does play an important role and you will come to know about it right at the end of the story what's your name little one so there is an affection to the tone in sharp contrast to her father who called her you fool and shouted at her so please note the contrast between the father and the teacher bo 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 she could stammer no further than that so she's not even able to say her name boli then she began to cry and tears flowed from her eyes in a helpless flood she kept her head down as she sat in her corner not daring to look up at the girls who she knew was still laughing at her so she is now being seen as the odd person out you know as the odd one out who is not like the others because she stammers because her fork face has a whole lot of marks uh, she does not look sharp enough and she's obviously a late comer to that classroom to that school so essentially being ostracized in a sense of you know students not getting friendly with her when the school bell rang all the girls scurried out of the classroom that is ran out of the classroom but boli dared not leave her corner she wasn't sure she is not sure about what the activities at that school are her head still lowered she kept on sobbing so she is crying weeping boli the teacher's voice was so soft and so soothing in all her life she had never been called like that that is never been called with that kind of a tone and voice quality it touched her heart please mark these words get up said the teacher it was not a command but just a friendly suggestion so boli got up now tell me your name sweat broke out all over her body would her stammering tongue again disgrace her so she is also embarrassed about the fact that she is not even able to say her name without stammering for the kind of this for the sake of this kind woman however she decided to make the effort an effort she had such a soothing voice she would not laugh at her so she is obviously taking to this particular teacher who is obviously of a kind nature kind disposition okay soothing voice is the phrase used she again begins to stammer well done well done the teacher encourages her so even though she is not able to complete her name and only say bo the teacher encourages her in order to speak come on now tell me the full name bolish at last she was able to say it and felt relieved as if it were a great achievement so she almost feels a sense of victory in having said her own name which would be very normal common place for all the other students but for boli even that is a huge achievement a big victory well done the teacher patted her affectionately and said put the fear out of your heart and you will be able to speak like everyone else very important the element of fear and what you should do about fear and how you should react to fear because this plays an important role later on in boli's life at the time of her marriage right so this line the line that is taught to her on day 1 by this kind teacher stays on in 
bolis mind and heart and that goes on to play an important role so this is an important element an important sentiment that you should make note of boli looked up as if to say really ask really yes yes it is very easy you just come to school every day uh, will you come boli nodded no say it aloud yes and boli herself was astonished that she was able to say it she had been able to say it didn't i tell you now take this book now in that book there were lots of pictures in order to make boli comfortable to school life to academic life right and after every picture the name was written in big black letters in one month you will be able to read this book then i will give you a bigger book then a still bigger one so she's telling her she's kind of introducing her to the world of letters to the world of learning to the world of education and obviously wanting boli to be co-opted into this new world in time you will be able to you'll be more learned than anyone else in the village so she's encouraging her then no one will ever be able to laugh at you people will listen to you with respect and you'll be able to speak without the slightest stammer understand now go home and come back early tomorrow morning so these kind of kind affectionate words are making a difference to boli's life boli felt as if suddenly all the bells in the village temple were ringing almost its celebration and the trees in front of the school house had blossomed into big red flowers her heart was throbbing with a new hope and a new life so you realize what difference does a kind approach make to a person's life the positivity that the teacher had managed to infuse into boli's mind thus the years passed so now the story has been fast forwarded okay so uh, the positive encouragement that she receives now we will see what kind of a role does it play later on in her life the village became a small town the little primary school became a high school there was now a, there were now a cinema under a tin shed and a cotton ginning mill uh, the mail train began to stop at the railway station so progress and development had come to their village one night after dinner ramlal said to his wife then shall i accept bishamber's proposal yes certainly his wife said boli will be lucky to get such a well to do bridegroom a big shop a house of his own and i hear several thousand in the bank moreover he is not asking for any dowry okay now this is an important element okay so they are planning to get boli married finally that's right but he is not so young now this this is an important element that bishambar is not a very young man you know almost the same age as i am so he's the same age as ramlal himself and he also limbs okay moreover the children from his first wife are quite grown up so Boli is to be the second wife of Bishambar, who is a widower, and uh, he has a limp, and uh, is as old as Boli's father Ramlal. So, what does it matter? His wife replied. So, his wife seems to be not very affectionate towards Boli because of the reasons that were mentioned earlier in the story. Forty-five or fifty, it is no great age for a man. We are lucky that he is from another village and does not know about her pock marks and her lack of sense. if we don't accept this proposal she may remain unmarried all her life so they just want to dispose her of irrespective of the kind of bridegroom irrespective of the kind of husband they are getting for their youngest daughter because they are conscious um, about her lack of good looks uh, yes but i wonder what boli will say what will that witless one say she said uh, she is like a dumb cow so another reference to cow out here uh, when she's grown up uh again a dumb cow being used as someone as someone who is uh, just to kind of nod her head in approval to whatever is decided for her future life by her elders by her parents and witless one is the phrase used again a slightly rough kind of a connotation maybe you are right muttered ramlal who seems to agree to whatever the wife say so we are also getting an idea about the kind of equation between boli's mother and father in uh, in the other corner of the courtyard boli lay awake on her cot because she was listening to whatever was being uh, spoken by her parents bishambar nath was a well to do grocer that is he ran a grocery shop a kirana kind of a store he came with a big party of friends and relations for him for the wedding a brass band playing a popular tune from an indian film headed the procession with the bridegroom bridegroom riding a decorated horse ramlal was overjoyed to see such pomp and splendor he had never dreamt that his fourth daughter 
would have such a grand wedding because the bridegroom was rich even though there were many other negatives associated with him. Boli's elder sisters who were all married who had come for the occasion were envious of her luck. Just look at them that they obviously thought that here was someone who was not blessed with good looks, was not really considered very sensible in that sense though she was the only one from the family to go to school. She had managed to get a bridegroom and she was having such a grand lavish wedding. When the auspicious moment came, the priest said, bring the bride. Boli, clad in a red silken bridal dress, was led to the bride's place near the sacred fire. Garland the bride, one of the friends, prompted Bishambarnath. The bridegroom lifted the garland of yellow marigolds, the flowers, and a woman slipped back the silken, silken veil from the bride's face, that is the gungat that is worn by the bride. Bishambar took a quick glance. The garland remained poised in his hand. That is, he did not garland her, but he kept looking at her without putting the garland around her neck. The bride slowly pulled down the veil over her face. So, she hid her face immediately. Have you seen her? said Bishambar to the friend next to him. She has pockmarks on her face, which means she, he had not even seen her before agreeing to this particular match. The friend says, well, you are not very young either. You know, if you are criticizing her for her looks, you are not someone who is very young either. Maybe, but if I am to marry her, her father must give me 5,000 rupees. So, he demands a sum of 5,000 rupees to be given to her and only on that condition will he put the garland around Boli's neck. Ramlal obviously very upset. He says, do not humiliate me like this and says, can you take 2,000 rupees instead, instead of 5,000 rupees, be a little considerate and uh, I will never be able to show my face in the village. Also, it gives you a sense of the traditional part uh, character of that village. He threatens that you should get 5,000, otherwise he will walk out of that particular marriage. So, Ramlal goes crying, he goes and gets a 5,000 rupees. On Bishamba's greedy face appeared a triumphant smile. He had gambled and won. So, he had taken a chance. Let me try to get this 5,000 rupees. Even though we are told at the beginning that he had not asked for any dowry. Give me the garland, he announced. And once again, the veil was slipped back from the bride's face. But this time, her eyes were not downcast. So, Boli was now looking up at Bishambar. She was looking up, looking straight at her prospective husband and in her eyes there was neither anger nor hate but only contempt, right? So, contempt essentially means that she was trying to ridicule him, uh, basically conveying the feeling that she thinks that this person is a worthless kind of person. Looking at him with a sense of ridicule and almost admonishing him for that kind of behavior. Uh, only cold contempt, right? Bishambar raised the garland to place it round the bride's neck but before he could do so, Boli's hand struck out like a streak of lightning and the garland was flung into the fire. So, she threw the garland into the fire and she said, Pitaji, take back your money even as everyone else around them is startled. Take back your money, I am not going to marry this man. Ramlal was thunderstruck. He was obviously taken aback. The guests began to whisper. So shameless. Again, conveys a different kind of a traditional kind of a society. So crazy and so shameless because they do not expect a girl to react in such a manner. A very patriarchal kind of a setup. Boli, are you crazy? You want to disgrace your family? Have some regard for her izzat. For the sake of her ijjat, says said Boli, I am willing to I was willing to marry this lame old man, but I will not have such a mean, greedy, and contemptible coward as my husband. I won't, I won't, I won't. So she's obviously very upset by the fact that because of her looks, he had decided to ask for a sum of five thousand rupees, failing which he would walk out of the marriage, will not marry Boli, despite all the arrangements which had been made. Uh, what a shameless girl. We all thought she was a harmless dumb cow. Now, this is an elderly woman saying this and Boli gets extremely angry and she says, yes, all these years I was indeed a dumb driven cow. All these years. And that's why you wanted me to be handed over to this heartless creature. But now the dumb cow, the stammering fool is speaking. So, now she has found her speak, speech. She's no longer stammering. She's having the self-confidence. In contrast to her day one at school where she lacked confidence through her years at school, she had learnt a lot and that's what education had provided for Boli. So, now she was able to stand for, out, uh, up for herself and make her point 
very very clear loud and clear and she says do you want to hear more bishambar nath the grocer started to go back with his party the confused bandsmen thought this was the end of the ceremony and struck up a closing song so just a point of just out here humor uh, ramlal stood rooted to the ground and his head bowed low with the weight of grief and shame because he thinks it's a matter of shame in that very traditional conservative kind of a society in that village that a girl's her, his daughter's marriage had been called off at the at the wedding pandap pandap it a mandap itself uh the flames of the sacred fire slowly died down everyone was gone ramlal turned to boli and said but what about you no one will ever marry you now but what shall we do with you and suleka said in a voice that was calm and steady don't you worry pitaji in your old age i will serve you and mother despite what they thought about her and i will teach in the same school where i learned so much isn't that right ma'am the teacher had all along stood in a corner watching the drama the corner again very important because on day 1 it was bholi who was standing he was sitting in a corner now the teacher is now the witness from a corner and she is obviously very proud of her student uh, because she had managed and dared to stand up for herself yes bholi of course she replied and in her smiling eyes was the light of a deep satisfaction that an artist feels when contemplating the completion of her masterpiece so boli being referred to now at the end of the story the last word of the story is that she is a masterpiece and the teacher is the one who has contributed to making this masterpiece and boli she thinks has really done something extremely commendable okay the uh, one of course is the concept of izzat that you will need to know and also the fact that teaching as a profession manages to actually create so many bolis in india and everyone else and that's what makes the uh, the profession of teaching such an honorable one and such an important one right now what are the kind of questions that would come as i said attention to detail and the other themes that i have pointed out during the explanation of the story is what you need to point out in your answers now for instance in 2020 one of the questions that was asked boli was a neglected child explained so what all the points would you say no new clothes for boli the old dresses were passed on to her no one cared for or mended her clothes parents sent her to school as they thought there was little chance of her getting married they wanted to pass on the wanted to pass on the burden to the teachers right so she she did not get a regular bath her hair was always very rough and matted so that's how she was seen as a neglected child why was suleka nicknamed boli now that's an important question which came in 2016 and again that's something if you know the story that she fell off from the, the court how she was a simpleton and she stammered and that's the reason why she was nicknamed as boli then the questions would come about why she refused to marry bishambar what were the condition what was the condition imposed by bishambar in order to marry boli and why uh, then you could get a question like for instance in 2013 why did boli react when her father caught her by her hand uh, to take her to school uh, in the if you get a longer format questions you could be this thing about boli in 2019 this question came boli is a child different from others this difference makes her an object of neglect and laughter elaborate so what were the reasons why they laughed her laughed at her parents did not even bathe her small pox was a reason um, she stammered and uh, society is generally intolerant of anyone who is a little hatke who is, does not kind of conform to the uniformity of other children her age so uh, about suleka's position in her family that's another question that could possibly come about the role of her teacher these are some of the other questions which what i would really suggest is that if you can keep your points ready so that when you write in the examination all these points will come much more easily and you will not leave out any point and as a result not lose any marks so ensure that you have all these points in your mind in your notes just write it out 1 2 3 4 and that will make the process of writing your answers that much more easy so thank you very much for watching i hope this chapter by k abbas the story by k abbas an inspirational story of boli is clear and any doubts write in the comment section more than happy to answer all of them thank you very much for watching